first quarter results. Um, so the highlights, first quarter cash flow was a record $629 million, or 211 per fully diluted share. Uh, Termaline generated record free cash flow of $233.5 million in the first quarter, which was utilized to fund the dividend increase announced on March 10th and to reduce net debt by approximately $153 million uh, in the quarter. First quarter 21 average production of uh, a little over 411,000 BOEs per day was ahead of the upper range of the full year guidance of 390 to 410,000 BOEs per day. And first quarter liquids production was also ahead at approximately 92,000 barrels per day. Uh, moving to some specifics on production, uh, driven by stronger than anticipated well performance, March production actually averaged just under 418,000 BUEs per day, and there were no storage withdrawal volumes or acquisition volumes in those totals. Uh, given stronger production performance in all three operating complexes, second quarter 21 production of 400,000 to 405,000 BUEs per day is now anticipated from the base EP program. <clears throat> As is the case every year, second quarter 21 production will be impacted by planned pipeline maintenance and company plant turnarounds, which are incorporated into those guidance estimates. Second quarter production estimates also include the impact of uh, injections in California and Dawn, uh, which are expected to reduce quarterly production volumes by approximately 4,500 BUEs per day. And it's those same storage positions which proved very valuable uh, this past winter. Uh, looking specifically at some of the financial results, first quarter cash flow uh, was $629.3 million. That was a 122% increase over the first quarter of 2020 and a 59% increase over the previous quarter's cash flow. Uh, first quarter 21 after-tax net earnings uh, were a little under $248 million or $0.83 cents per fully diluted share. Uh, and that compares favorably to a net loss of uh, just under $36 million in the first quarter of last year. Uh, our full year 21 forecast cash flow remains at $2.2 billion, yielding approximately $1.1 billion of free cash flow for the full year. Uh, OPEX in Q121 was 364 per BOE. Uh, the company's focused on further dropper, dropping operating costs by continuing to integrate the acquired Jupiter modern assets into the deep basin complex, as well as ultimately reducing gas volumes going to third party processing in the greater Gundy complex when the phase two plant expansion starts up. Some specifics on the capital program and the financial outlook. First quarter 2021 EMP capital spending was $385.7 million. We expended $30 million on Gundy facility pre built in the first quarter, and that puts us now in a position to start up the phase two deep cut expansion in early January 2022, and that's ahead of the original mid Q2 2022 completion target. This would allow us to take advantage of potentially stronger winter 2022 natural gas pricing, uh, similar to what just happened this past winter. Do note that 75% of the Gundy Phase II expansion volumes will ultimately flow to Malin and PG&E hubs via incremental long-term transport on the GTN system that Termaline has secured. We will finalize timing for this 45,000 BOE per day project startup, as well as provide revised 21, 22, and five-year plan guidance, reflecting both the impact of increased production volumes and improved strip pricing, and we'll do that during this quarter. Uh, Termaline did not complete any significant acquisitions during the first quarter. Uh, net debt uh, at March 31, 21 was 1.63 billion, and that's down 8.6% from exit 2020 net debt. And our plan is to continue to reduce debt during the year, and we're targeting a net debt to cash flow ratio at year end of approximately 0.5 times. And we are well on the way with that initiative. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, during the first quarter, uh, the company issued 250 million of senior unsecured notes at a very attractive fixed rate of 2.077% for seven years. 
Uh, the most recent five-year EP plan delivers free cash flow of $1.1 billion in 21 and $4.1 billion over the, the full five years of the plan. And the free cash flow will be utilized for further modest dividend increases, continued debt reduction, potential accretive acquisitions, select emission reduction environmental performance improvement investments, and potential tactical share buyback. Looking at marketing, uh, our average realized natural gas price in the first quarter was 386 per MCF Canadian, as we benefited from both hedging and the company's broad market diversification portfolio that extends throughout North America. Natural gas fundamentals for 21 and 22 continue to improve. Approximately 55% of our natural gas volumes are exposed to spot prices in markets on the western half of the continent those being PG&E, Malin, Sumas, Station 2, and Acle. Uh, and those are the hubs where the fundamentals continue to be most supportive for pricing. Completion of the ongoing NGTL build-out and ultimately Canadian West Coast LNG are expected to further strengthen pricing at these hubs. 95% uh, of our PG&E deliveries continue to remain on heads through 21, and that's a market where fundamentals remain very, very strong. NGL realizations in the first quarter were up 141% over the first quarter of 2020 and are expected to further strengthen through the balance of the year. And we are the largest NGL producer uh, in Canada. A brief EP update, uh, we operated 12 drilling rigs during the first quarter and we're currently operating four rigs through spring breakup. Uh, well performance in all three complexes has on average exceeded expectations, driving the stronger production performance that we realized in March and April. Uh, we drilled one Montney pad this winter in the Freeze Conroy area in Northeast BC on the lands acquired uh, in 2020 uh, from Polar Star. Uh, the La Prise, uh five well pad tested at a combined final total productive capacity of a little over 45 million a day and just under 4,000 barrels per day of condensate. And that's after three day per well flow test. And uh, obviously that was ahead of expectation. Uh, average completed well cost for this initial quite remote pad were uh, 3.9 million per well. And we do expect further drill complete capital costs of approximately three and a half million uh, per well or less with further drilling time optimization and stimulated well cost reduction uh, via centralization of our frac water uh, facilities. Uh, deep basin production reached a record uh, in early April of this year at a little over 261,000 BUEs per day, uh, driven in part by stronger than forecast performance on the acquired Jupiter Modern assets. Um, that deal, as you recall, was done in Q4 of, of 2020. So uh, some of the details are enclosed and I, I won't read them. Uh, of note, drilling costs on the Jupiter lands have averaged 43% less uh, since we took the property over. Completion costs have averaged 50% less, and equipping costs are down 70%, so a big win there. Uh, in our environmental performance improvement business, um, the company's expanded the significant ongoing diesel displacement initiatives into the well stimulation EP business segment. We entered into a joint venture with Tricam Well Service Limited to construct and utilize Canada's first low emission uh, gas powered frac fleet. And we'll be using that prior to year end in the Gundy complex. We continue to expand our water management initiatives, which reduce emissions, they save capital costs, and they significantly reduce fresh water usage. Um, we now have 37 water facilities spread across the three core complexes including eight produced water storage and recycling hubs. And uh, some highlights are listed there, uh, and they include a series of industry firsts in the overall water management business. And uh, I think that's it for the, the formal comments, and um, we're more than willing to uh, answer questions that you might have. As a oh, reminder, right Jeff. As a reminder, to ask a question, you'll need to press star 1 on your telephone. To withdraw your question, press the pound key. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster.
And your first question comes from the line of Patrick O'Rourke with ATB Capital. Good morning. Um, thanks for taking my call or my question. Um, so I think one of the things that really stood out for me in the release was the very, very strong results uh, at Conroy. I know you guys noted it as um, a flow test. Just wondering, are those wells currently tied in? And then in the deck, you talk about Conroy uh, phase one and phase two. Phase two is more of a, a Gundy style development. Just, you know, curious what would be entailed uh, as of right now in, in phase one, which is, you know, more right in front of us than phase two, which is uh, a little bit further out. Sure. Um, as far as that pad, uh, initially, well, the pad side in, um, there was only room for three of the first five wells to start with. I think they're all on now, and all that data is actually in the in the public domain, and so they've been very strong with very strong uh, condensate rates, and, and they've uh, been maintained. Uh, Conroy Phase 1 is really optimizing on Polar Star uh, and Chinook uh, and, you know, reducing OPEX, uh, delineation drilling to ascertain uh, how inexpensively uh, we can drill these pads in advance uh, of a big ramp up and, yes, you're right, Gundy style facility. And, and right now our timing for that is kind of, um, you know, it's coeval with uh, LNG Canada startup because we're mindful not to grow uh, basin supply. So when, you know, that extra pull of gas wet happens, we think prices are going to be very strong. We're going to need the supply and that's the right time to build uh, Conroy, the, the big uh, deep cut at Conroy. Okay, great. And then the other thing that really stood out to me in the release was the uh, improvements that you guys have been able to make on the capital cost on the Jupiter acquired assets. Um, you know, to be able to drop them by, call it, 50% in a matter of months. Um, what's the real driver there, and, you know, how durable is that? Are you guys building in any potential inflation going forward uh, in the basin here? Um, it's all about uh, our drilling and completion kind of engineering, well design, and execution. So, you know, those uh, reductions on a per well basis will certainly be maintained. And in our five-year plan, we do build in 2.5% per annum inflation, and we actually always have. Uh, and so we think, you know, we put in the appropriate contingency for uh, potential cost increases over the next 12 months. And is, is that, you know, turning it out to be reflective of what you're seeing, you know, in the market when you're looking further out? I know there's been... Um, you know, inflation in some of the input costs for the service companies like hot rolled steel and, and things of that nature, that's a pretty solid number to go with right now, that 2.5%? Yeah, we think it's reasonable. I mean, those negotiations and repricing are kind of going on right now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And your next question comes from the line of Filey with Odlum Brown. Uh, thank you. Hi, Mike. Um, you mentioned the potential tactical share buyback. I'm just wondering how you're thinking about that. Uh, your shares look pretty cheap compared to how much cash flow you're generating. Um, your peers south of the border seem to be turning out a lot lower free cash flow yields. Just wondering how you're thinking about share buybacks. And um, like, do you have the certain debt targets that you want to reach before you, you initiate the share buybacks, or how, you, how are you thinking about that? Sure. Um, well, the, the order that we listed them is probably the priority. Uh, and our priority this year is, you know, the modest sustainable dividend increases or increase. We did do one uh, in the first quarter and the debt reduction. So uh, I think you're on to it. Um, let us reduce that debt over the next two or three quarters, get it down to 0.5 times debt to cash flow or less, and then we can revisit some of the other priorities on the list. Okay, and just to follow up, I, how do you see the acquisition market compared to like, you know, the return you could get back from a share buyback or like, how do you think about that at this point, given mark, current market conditions for acquisitions? Well, I mean, those are, you know, economic comparisons we would always make. Uh, you know, what is the best use uh, of capital? We do see uh, the M&A market uh, as still uh, strong. Uh, as far as the, the pipeline of, of opportunities, um, costs have come up uh, somewhat.
somewhat depending you know what and where you're looking so we we monitor that and, and continue to make those economic comparisons across you know all the potential use of incremental capital that we have okay good thank you thanks bye and you have no further questions at this time well thanks everybody we'll talk to you next quarter this concludes today's conference